Hey, welcome to my studio setup. Isn't it beautiful? Isn't it so pristine and clean? This is all I need to work with. Well, apart from all the crap in here, and all the crap over here, and more crap over here, and more crap in here, and all the crap in here. You see, I only just recently jumped on the minimalism bandwagon, and I hear you, I might be a little bit late to the party, and that's not because I hadn't heard about it. I don't watch the news. I just couldn't give a fuck about it at the time. So I decluttered my house and my studio in an effort to achieve that minimalism aesthetic that you see on Instagram and Pinterest and whatnot. And I kept finding all these art supplies. So why the fuck do I have all this stuff? I'm an oil painter. That's my niche. I am an oil painter. So it turns out that all this stuff that I'd accumulated over the years was in fact due to a very bad case of gas. Gas. I'm talking about gear acquisition syndrome. You see, over the years, whenever I wanted to begin a painting, my form of procrastination was, hang on a minute, I need some new gear. I need to do some research. I'm gonna try a new medium. I'm gonna try a different panel. I need to buy some new brushes. That'll help me be a better artist. My methods of beating procrastination are almost as useless as Etsy's attempt to purge all the illegal items that are currently for sale on their platform. So I've tried being motivated, being disciplined, scheduling. I've tried routines. I've tried painting when I didn't feel like it. So unfortunately my procrastination is as persistent as the fungus gnats that made their way into my plant collection via a bag of Osmocote premium potting mix. Thanks Osmocote, you suck. So instead of just sitting down and painting, I would procrastinate. I would spend all that time researching new painting tools, or I'd get super focused on my house plant collection. I'd go through what I call the great circle jerk of procrastination. Picture a circle, around it you've got social media, art tools, houseplants, health and fitness, productivity, my art business, writing, and then outside of that circle would be painting. And basically I would jump across the circle and just focus on one of these outside areas. And occasionally I jump outside the circle this circle jerk, and I would actually paint. Because apparently you're spinning around and apparently every time you get dizzy. So it's not that I didn't get any paintings finished. I think last year I completed 25 or 26 paintings. So just realizing how much time was wasted on other things, like expanding my houseplant collection or decluttering my house researching art tools. And just in that one area alone, art tools, there's a whole branch of different things that I got completely swept up in. You know, at one stage, I wanted to paint with gouache. So I researched. What it was made of? Who makes it? What's the best brand according to all these Instagram art influencers? Where the cheapest art store was to buy said brand? What other types of materials are they in order to paint with gouache? It would move on from gouache to airbrushing. Then I'd spend weeks researching. What's the best type of airbrush? To use what's the cheapest. I'd watch hours and hours of YouTube reviews on USB powered airbrushes, compressor style airbrushes. What's the best paint to use for said airbrushes? What other equipment do I need? Mask, gloves, a spray booth. Like with each art medium, I just tended to go down this fucking rabbit hole. And when I did appear back out of the hole, I'd realize how much time I'd wasted. And I always seem to just go back to oil paint anyway. So in one respect, it was educational to learn about all these different materials and how they work and whatnot. But on the other hand, it's still a waste of time when I just kept going back to oil paint. 
It's the same with productivity. I'd have to buy the latest productivity book or the newest and best book about acrylics or oils or health and fitness, art marketing, um, how to run an art business. Although those things are really good to learn about, in the end, I didn't do anything with all that information. The gouache kit that I bought, I think I've used it twice. All the acrylics that I've bought, I've used them occasionally. Now I just use all the acrylics that I've bought as an underpainting for my oil paintings because they dry quick. So when I think back about all the stuff that I've bought over the years and researched and learned about, all those hours could have been spent actually painting paintings, oil paintings. The thing that I love doing and have loved doing from the time that I learned how to paint back when I was in my early 20s. How am I dealing with procrastination now? I currently use a forest app. It's like the Pomodoro technique. You put in the time that you want to paint for. I put in an hour. If you stop painting before the hour's up, the tree that you've planted, it dies. Although it was great to start with, to be honest, I just don't give a fuck whether the tree dies or not. I just, I don't care. That's kind of not really working for me too well anymore. The next technique that I've been using is pretending that every painting is a commission. So therefore it has a deadline. I try to get each painting done within a couple of weeks. The problem with that is that I can't pretend to see a 50% deposit in my bank account. Yeah, that one's a tricky one. So another thing that I've tried to beat procrastination is I actually developed my own system and I call it painting with class. So it's an acronym, uh, C-L-A-S-S, and it's coffee, listening to music, my apron, a stopwatch, and then I just start. So it's a routine that I go through before I start each painting. So I grab myself a coffee, I put on Spotify, sometimes a audiobook or a podcast, but it's usually music, put on my apron, and then I start my stopwatch, which is forest the forest app at the moment and then I just start painting if you don't like coffee or if you prefer to work in silence you can just call it painting with arse so I really think that in order to beat procrastination or get around it you actually have to develop some systems of your own whatever works for you so if that means before you start a painting you grab a glass of water or a coffee or a tea it's something that you associate with beginning to paint. As far as my current setup is concerned, I really like the minimal aesthetic of my studio. My desk setup is really nice and clean. It's actually quite functional. I've got my computer screen right next to my easel. I've got a vertical palette and it's all within reach. I'm really going to try and just stick with oil paint from now on. If I do feel myself getting s kind of sucked down that rabbit hole of something, whatever it may be, I think that you kind of have to go easy on yourself. You have to realize that wherever you're heading, that mindset, that path that you're about to go down, maybe it's something that you need, or maybe it might be giving you that little bit of headspace. <laughs> To flesh out an idea, I paint imaginative realism, which means that I make pieces up. I add elements from reality to make up an imaginary scene. And that doesn't always come straight away. I add elements to the painting depending on where the story or the narrative in the painting is headed. If that means that I have to watch YouTube for a little while and watch birds or some nature channels or something like that to get some inspiration, then that's not always a bad thing. So I think you have to be kind to yourself. Let yourself go down those paths, but also realise when it's time to pull yourself back and actually just get down to painting. So I hope that little insight has helped you on your painting journey and I'll see you in the next video. Bye. I gotta tell you, it was perfect.
perfect. Everything, down to the last minute details.